I know a Christian who was once so ashamed of his sin that he thought his pastor would skip him at communion. This man was a teacher I had back in my college days and he told the story that he struggled so intensely with sin that he was convinced like in the middle of the message, somehow his pastor would make eye contact with him and just shake his head in disgust. The shame and the guilt was so bad, he actually would kind of hide, pick the special spot in the church where the pastor couldn't see him while he was preaching. But then communion would happen. And the usher would tell this man to go forward and he'd go up to the communion rail and he would kneel down and he was convinced the pastor would once again look him in the eye and just skip him like he wasn't worthy to receive such a great gift. But guess what? The pastor didn't. Instead, the pastor said, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And I love those two words so much. I, I love that about communion and I love those words when it comes to Christmas. This week, we've been unpacking this beautiful verse, Luke chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. To you. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means to you. <laughs> it doesn't mean to them. It doesn't mean to us generically. It doesn't mean to the world. It means to you. It means that Jesus, the Savior, the rescuer from sin, was born he came into the world to understand you and even more to give his life for you. And that wasn't for other people. It was actually for you. And the best proof is right here in Luke chapter 2, the shepherds. These third shift common workers, guys who might not have had the best reputation in the first century, the angel said, today in the town of David, shepherds, a savior has been born to you. And I want you to believe that too. The easiest thing in the world is to think that the good news of Christianity is for other people but not you. Not after what you said, not after the argument you got into, not after the choice you made, not after the, the baggage that you bring into this relationship with God. It's so easy to think that the angel didn't actually say that, but he did. Grace is for you and forgiveness is for you because Jesus was born to you. So the next time you hear this scripture read, maybe at your next Christmas service, maybe when the children are cited in the Christmas program or the pastor reads it from the front of the church, I want you to smile and maybe put your hand over your heart and say yes to you because it's to you and for you too. Let's pray. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you for loving us and not just other people. Thank you for being so all-inclusive with your love and your promises of forgiveness. Thank you that at the end of this day, no matter how strong or weak it is, we never have to wonder or doubt if we're forgiven or loved because you appeared to the shepherds and you promised them incredible love and grace. Thank you, God, for simple scriptures like John 3, 16, that you so love the world and we know who's included in the world. Let this personalized forgiveness be powerful in our hearts. Help us to believe it and send your spirit that we could hold on to it. Those two words would mean everything to us. I thank you, Jesus, that you came in as the Savior of the world. We ask this all in your wonderful name. Amen. Hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Pastor Mike here. I want to tell you that we have a brand new podcast through Time of Grace called Bible Threads with Dr. Bruce Becker. Uh, Bruce is one of my colleagues at Time of Grace and he has a, an amazing gift of going deep into God's word. Uh, I think all of us love the simple message that Jesus loves us and he proved it at the cross. But there is so much when you really dig into the meat of scripture and that's what Dr. Becker does in this brand new podcast. So if you want to check it out with me, you can search for Bible Threads wherever you like to enjoy your podcasts. Uh, I guarantee it's going to be worth your time as we find these amazing treasures that God has put into his word.